The LA Lakers begin the night ninth in the Western Conference, six and ten since LeBron James went down. Currently, just a game and a half back of the, uh, not even cross town. They're they're co-tenants. The LA Clippers. They're at Staples Center. That's where we find Sean Powell from NBA.com ahead of the uh, Laker Philadelphia 76er game tonight. Hello, Sean. Good to have you with us as always. First off, uh, the Pelicans obviously will have final say where Anthony Davis goes if and when they trade him. But it is widely assumed that Rich Paul, the agent that AD shares with LeBron James, is orchestrating a move to the Lakers. How deep does Davis mania run in Los Angeles right now? Well, people here are understandably excited, uh, none of which, by the way, is being expressed by the, uh, the Lakers because that would be tampering, right? Of course, we can't <laughs> have So that. they don't want to give that kind of appearance, so it's kind of muted. Um, but, you know, I wonder about how much of a distraction it is for Alonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram. I mean, they don't know next week, are they going to be passing the ball to LeBron James or Etwan Moore? I mean, these are young players who thought, who figured that – they be part of, of the Laker near future and maybe distant future because, you know, all along, you know, they were being groomed to, to, to support LeBron James. And all of a sudden, it looks like the Lakers have veered over into the express lane. Right. And you wonder whether or not they're going to sacrifice some of their youth for Anthony Davis. I can't see how they how they can't. And already you've got Lonzo Ball's people getting out to the media that he would prefer to go to a team without an established point guard. They're, everybody's jumping into the middle of this thing. Um, LeBron James will miss his 17th straight game tonight. Two-part question here. Uh, how close is he to coming back? He's been practicing for a few days now. And secondly, what do the Lakers feel like they've learned about some of these other young players who they saw a lot the last couple of seasons but have had a chance to see over this extended run without the king on the floor? Well, uh, LeBron will probably return for the Clippers. I mean, he's been back. His practices, practices have been limited. He had limited contact in, in, in his last practice, but, you know, reported no pain or, or, or anything that would give the Lakers any kind of indication that, that he's not on the right path. Um, I would think that playing against the Clippers would be a good warm-up for the next game, which is going to be in Oakland against the Warriors. Of course, that's where this terror happened in the first place on Christmas Day when he when he got hurt. But as far as the young players, I think it's been a mixed bag. Uh, you know, suddenly the Lakers see they have a good young center and Zubac. I mean, he's played very well for them. Brandon Ingram has you know been hot and cold. Lonzo, of course, got hurt, so we don't really know the complete picture there. And Kyle Kuzma has done well as far as being a primary scorer. But again, I mean. You know, when LeBron comes back, that changes everything. So, so whatever they saw without LeBron really doesn't mean that much because when LeBron comes back, he goes back to controlling the ball, and all of a sudden the system is different. Sean, Philadelphia is a team that actually benefited from a superstar asking to be traded. They traded some young depth to get into that situation with Jimmy Butler. How are they feeling now about the fit of Jimmy and Joel, and what does it sound like for them in terms of just their progress to this point? I would say it's probably still a work in progress. You know, everyone's still trying to figure out their roles. I know Jimmy Butler had that little hiccup there where, you know, he had to talk to the coach about his role. And all this is, you know, ongoing. But the good news is that they still have another 25, 30 games to get it really right. Uh, I think they have a lot of confidence going in, into the post-All-Star break. Uh, they feel that there is cohesion. Of course, you know, once the playoffs begin and, you know, you get into a little bit of trouble and then all that goes out the window. But I think right now that the Sixers feel good about themselves. I think they would love to have an additional shooter. Now, whether or not they can pull something like that off at the trade deadline without parting with any of their nucleus remains to be seen. But I think when you look at this team right now, if they would just have another shooter on the floor like they had last season, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, I think that they'd be something to, uh, you know, a team to watch. I remember last year they picked up Marco Bellinelli and Ersan Ilyasova, both stretch guys for virtually nothing. It's just buyout mm -hmm. guys. Unlikely to be able to do that two years in a row. Sean Powell, uh, Powell with us from Los Angeles ahead of the 76ers and Lakers. Appreciate the time, Sean. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, guys. Guys, uh, take me into the Laker locker room with all these young players who are obviously potential trade targets now with this Anthony Davis thing out there, whether it's next week, over the summer, etc. 
you know, it's easy to say, you know, it's a part of the game, it's a business, et cetera. But these are a lot of young guys who haven't been through this before. I honestly believe that there were X number of players in that locker room that never gave a thought for a while that this could ever happen. I mean, they were on the Lakers. Wow, I'm, I'm with the Los Angeles Lakers. And then, wow, LeBron's here and he wins championships. Right. I have a chance to be on, on a run. And think about them. If their agents didn't caution them, they may have invested in a home in the L.A. area, thinking I'm going to be here the next three, four, five years for sure. And now all of a sudden the reality of this comes out when they're looking and seeing all the packages that people are putting together. And, uh-oh, that's my name in there. Right. I could be out of here. Hits you all of a sudden, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's fascinating. I actually think because so many of those kids have agents that would have explained to them that the timeline has changed once LeBron got there, mm -hmm. to some degree many of them have probably been waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I, I think it's possible that this is something that doesn't take them by surprise. I think it's something that many of them have, have realized is a possibility. And what's been significant for them, I think, is because of LeBron's absence, and you talked about this with Sean, they've been able to do what they do a little bit more and, and have sort of a, a freedom out there that they can just go play and every possession isn't going to be judged. I think it's easier to play in that environment. So they've gotten to showcase themselves a little bit. I think Lonzo Ball's camp coming out with word that he <laughs> would not be comfortable in a certain situation right. speaks to the fact that this is a topic in that locker room and has been for quite some time. And by the way, that's just the uh, camp getting ahead of things and doing its job, right? You signal to whoever was listening. Sure. Would like to go here, you know, would not like to go there as In much. a matter of speaking. It may or may not actually work, but it's worth a shot. Drew Holiday and the Pelicans getting set to go against the Rockets in Houston at the top of the hour on TNT. Drew Holiday getting set to go in Houston tonight in the middle of what, what could be maybe his best season as a pro. He's had a, some really good ones, former All-Star in the Eastern Conference as well. Uh, hasn't shown up in the win column, and the Pelicans are in danger of Falling out of relevance in the West. Here's Holiday with Karan Butler ahead of a players only Tuesday night. Here with Drew Holiday, can you just talk to me about your mindset coming in here playing the Rockets today? Right. Um, really good team. Uh, we've also, or we've all seen what James has been doing. Um, do our best to try to corral him and, and, and stop him from scoring 40 points. Um, run him off the three point line. That's what they love to do. And uh, also keep James off the free throw line. Yeah. So I, I guess you're going to get. The first crack at him, or obviously a crack at him. So, how would you slow him down, being one of the best two-way guys in the game? Um, honestly, just try to keep him guessing. Uh, sometimes play, play him up close, uh, make him drive. Sometimes play off of him. Uh, try to be handsy, but in a way that that, that it doesn't uh, cause fouls. And uh, really rely on my teammates. Um, uh, drive down there into the big to be able to to block or make him pass it out uh, for for a three. And from there, we're gonna have to rotate. I know this is one of the tough times for the organization right now with AD news coming out. You know, you said that based upon him and his future, 90% of the reason you was here because of him. Can you just speak on that a little bit? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, in my opinion, he's what top three in the world. Uh, his athletic ability, what he can do as a, as a, as an athlete, as a player, um, even a friend, I've been with him for six years. So, uh, I feel like for me coming around a talent of, of that caliber, uh, was kind of once in a lifetime and, uh, we had a good thing going. So, uh, but but on that note, man, Anthony's doing everything he, he's doing best for himself, and, and I'm not mad at that. Um, he's he's the ultimate professional. He still comes here and works, and and uh, st still cheers for his team. So, uh, I'm happy for him. Last question: Does that change anything with your future going forward? Uh, as of right now, no. I'm here to play basketball uh, today. Specifically, I'm here to try to beat the Houston Rockets. So. Uh, go out there, give it my all, and, and try to exhaust myself and play as hard as I can. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Thank you, Guys. Interesting thoughts from Drew Holiday there, and got to deal with that guy tonight. James Harden and the Rockets. Chris Paul back in the lineup. They've won three in a row in four of their last five as they get set to go against the Pels. Chris Paul played 25 minutes the other night after returning from that hamstring injury. 12 points, 5 boards, 6 assists on 4 of 8 shooting. He is back tonight as the Rockets take on the Pelicans. Here's Mike D'Antoni on his point guard and his second game back. Well, I think it, I mean, it's, we, we have to do it that way. I don't think Chris enjoys that. He'd rather stay in and play, but we need to be 
cautious here next couple of weeks, and then he'll he'll eventually get back up to 30, 31, whatever, where we'd like to keep him. Have you ever done something like they've got going where it's out there, what, the limbo that they seem to be in now? No, not really. No, it's kind of odd. How tough of a thing is that uh, to well, keep the focus? That's tough. You know, I, you'd have to be inside the locker room, and I, I, I can't. I'm, this never happened to me, and I'm not over there, so I will have no clue. You, even just the game or two before a trade deadline can be somewhat tense. Well, most players get a little nervous about them, but, they, you know, it happens to everybody in the sense of everybody knows that it's a business, and that's part of the deal. But you got to keep focused and get through it. And I'm sure there's a lot of players that like to get to the other side of the deadline so that they can stay at home, but that's just part of business. When you think about what you guys have done, in a sense, adding off the rivers, adding free, kind of making deadline deals in the middle of the season, have, have really worked out, have they not? Oh, it's really worked out, and it, especially with all the injuries that uh, they, both those guys have saved us and got us into a position where we are. Now we've added them to a pretty good team, so as soon as we get everybody back, you know, we'll see what we got, but it looks promising for sure. Do you, do you guys, is it too early to get progress updates on Clint and how he's doing and everything? Uh, he's laying in the sun, I'm sure. He's just out there in California somewhere. <laughs> Not bad. It's, it's something that he has to heal. He, he's, uh, he'll be ready to go when it's time. Later tip-off show, and welcome back. Players only, baby. That's right. We're in the house on TNT now. Anthony Davis, he may not be in New Orleans much longer. We're going to talk about that in a second. But James Harden, he definitely will be in the house in Houston. And can he get 40 again tonight? 40 piece. That's right. We got New Orleans and Houston next on TNT. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. That's right. Players only. We're here. We got the same faces and some new additions. But if you don't know the man to my right, then you don't know basketball. That's right. That's the big shack, the big everything, cactus, nostrils, all that stuff. You know, yeah. we got California, L.A.'s finest to be exact when we talk about Baron Davis. And we finally got some class up on the set. Thank you. You know what I mean? And some game. We have to get our girl. I wasn't talking about you, me, neither. No, I was saying thank oh, you. Oh, I, I thought you were that. saying yeah, yeah, class. Sure. Okay. We, well, we both in agree is that yes. the great Candace Park, we welcome you to the set. Thank, thank you for being here with us. We appreciate you. And, you know, let's get right into it. Shaq, you know, your time in Orlando, uh, you were a free agent or you were coming up for free, free agency and you didn't go back to Orlando. You, you understand sort of what Anthony Davis is going through, not that you asked to be a uh, trader. Can you... Give us a little insight on what you think he's going through, whether you think it was the right move for him to ask to, to leave, and, and what do you think he'll go through if he doesn't have a trade for the rest of the season? Well, we all know basketball, and we all know the people that's around him. Uh, he had an agent. He's one of those players, like we were, really didn't need an agent. We're going to get the max deal regardless. But you had to know and understand that when he signed with, signed with Rich Paul and Clutch Sports, knew this was going to happen. You know, uh, he's the type of player who's made a name for himself. He probably wants to play in, in a big market. And uh, his agent's best friend plays in, one of his, plays in one of the biggest markets in L.A. So we knew this was going to happen. I thought it was going to be done a little bit more quietly. But, you know, he's, he's already mentioned that he's not going to sign that five for 240. So he said, hey, I want to be traded. So now the ball's in the uh, Court of the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah, you can see what we'll he's, see what happens. You can see what he's done here, Shaq. Seven years in the league. This year, he's number two in scoring. Uh, he's in top at blocks, and kind of see just his list. And you and I were talking, Candace, before the game, and you had a little different perspective as far as we were just talking about players and asking out. What do you feel of, of the situation with AD? Well, I'm all for him saying that he's not going to resign with the Pelicans. That's being upfront and being honest. But where it's kind of gray area is asking to, to be traded in the middle of the season, you know, a week or so before the trade deadline. And I just think from a teammate's perspective, you heard True Holiday say, I came here 90%. for 90% yeah, yeah, yeah. for Anthony Davis. And so just to kind of 
give that vibe in the middle of the season as a leader of a franchise, uh, that, that's, a, that's a tough situation. And BD, if I'm, of course I understand Anthony Davis, but if I'm New Orleans, I'm, I'm like, we all about to lose. I ain't trading nobody. <laughs> I'm gonna wait to the, I'm gonna wait to get what I want. What do you think? How do you think the situation gonna play out? What do you see with the situation? Uh, I think New Orleans needs to think about New Orleans and start to think about their future, right? You know, here you have a guy who, he ain't coming back. You know, let's face the facts, he's not coming back. Um, you don't have enough to with him to keep building so you should blow it up get the best offer out there get some draft picks uh the lakers have have great uh players and talent you got boston out there everybody's throwing their best at you look assess take the best offer and let that man go and do what he got to do let me leave this on the table for you guys now we've been in the league a long time around basketball anthony davis got fined fifty thousand dollars for his public trade demand have y'all ever heard of a player getting fined for saying he wanted to go to another team? No, no. I've heard of no, me either. So we did a little uh, research, me an underdog. Rudy Fernandez, I really don't know who that is. I'm, I'm yeah, gonna... play for Rudy the Blazers. Fernandez, he played for the Blazers. On. He uh, played for the Blazers. Blazers. I got to still play. I see a picture. Huh? So. Does he still play? I mean, it, it depends on what uh, he say. See, no, he got fined. And then the other was our boy Nate Robinson. Nate, I just okay. called oh, yeah, you. Pick Nate. up the phone. Up, I was about to ask Nate why he got fined. Now, you're telling me, out of all that we've heard, that these are the two names that got that got fined, y'all. Tampering. I think I think I think the reason why he got fined is the whole like you know he's a superstar in the league. Here they here they come with the tampering stuff, and so he's just adding fuel to the fire. You know what I mean? So the league, you know the league. But these players, I could call you and be like, let's hook up. I mean, if we players, how can I'm I? I'm not saying it's wrong. He, he should say whatever he wants. Right. You know what I mean? But I've never seen nothing like this. And again, you had to know when he signed with Rich Paul, this was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knew it was coming. I agree. The play was totally telegraphed on, on that side. <laughs> From a franchise standpoint, like in terms of trying to attract other free agents, you're going to file an investigation against one of your players? No, it sounds I mean, like New Orleans you, is, is not that, happy with that's the That's what I mean. It's oh, so the it's team like, finding. They, yeah, well, the team the has team to launch an investigation. Launched an investigation. And then they lost an investigation. And $50,000 ain't worth it. You know what I mean? They, they just... <laughs> they need, yeah, to, keep that money. They need to just yeah. go on and make some trades, yeah. get some real okay, money. Okay, but I have a question. You know. I have a question. Yeah. 5 two forty. You can't get that nowhere else. Oof. Would you, would you want to go... And play somewhere else, or do you want to take that? See what? what did, I stayed in say? Sacramento for much less. I definitely five, five for two forty. I'm saying. But but I'm the thing staying. is, too, Shaq, the, the the basketball teams, or the, I'm sorry, the shoe companies are paying you more than ever now, and so it seems like a lot of players are using that to rely on the fact they can make that up. I forget making it up. I'm, five, trying make it, I'm trying to make it when it comes. Yeah. And two forty in New Orleans yeah, is a lot different than yeah, but 240 yeah. In, LA. in LA, as we know very well. A whole lot different. Two forty yeah. in LA is one twenty. So me. it's pretty yeah, much like, a what, yeah, it might be less than that. Still, I'd rather have one twenty and live in LA. No. Oh, you from LA? LA. Oh, oh, get out anyway. Oh, who gonna win the Super Bowl? Tell Who gonna win the Super Bowl? The Rams, dog. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. He's like a New Yorker. That's my son's favorite team. Oh, so now it's your son's favorite team. You got to win. <laughs> and anyway, check it out. As we go to break, All-Star Weekend is coming up. And here's a look at the Friday Rising Stars roster. Now, it's presented by Mountain Dew Ice. Now, first we have the world team. And let me see. I know all those guys on that team. Lori Markin, one of our favorite players. You know what Doncic could do. Aiden, he's from uh, the Bahamas. Ben Simmons, he is from, where's Ben Simmons from? Australia. Australia. Yeah, there we go. And, hey, BD, you know my man from Brooklyn's name right there? Yeah, his name is Rudos Kukruz. Yeah, I had to ask because I didn't know. It's Rodot. Kruk. Dang, I just spelt it. I, I can't even say it. Anyway, let me go to the next one. I can't even oh, read it. I spelled right it out there. myself. The USA, you got De'Aaron Fox. Who you like seeing on this roster, De'Aaron? Be All of them. De'Aaron Fox, Tatum, Kuz. Trey Young. I'm going to go with my guy, De'Aaron Fox. Too fast for everybody else. Man. I'm going to go with Jason Tatum. Okay. Stop got my young boy Bagley. Right. Wow, well, we like smoking. That. How about how about the Kings and the Brooklyn Nets have two players for each team and the Lakers? We look at Kuzma and Alonzo Ball. We're gonna love checking out that game. What's up, Jan Jackson? I played with your pops. He was a hog. Don't you be a hog like him? We'll be back. No, I'm just messing. What's up, Jan? We'll be back <laughs> with more players only in a minute.